Hey guys, welcome back to High Yield Intraday Trading. I hope everyone of you is doing good. So before we start discussing today's topic, let me request you all to subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button here. Once you click on it, you will get the confirmation on the left bottom corner. Post you subscribe to my channel. Also make sure to press the bell icon and click on all. You will get the confirmation on the left bottom corner so that whenever I upload a video, you get the notification about the same without any messes. Also, I would request you all to subscribe to my telegram channel with the name HYIT intraday calls because I share a lot of things over there and it might be helpful to you in some way or the other all right so before we start with today's discussion please allow me to mention about an offer that will reduce your capital requirements for trading various segments like the NSE futures and the MCX futures Okay, talking about the NSE features, you can trade contracts like Nifty, Bank Nifty, SGX Nifty, etc. with just 6,000 rupees for one lot. Whereas in MCX, you can trade one lot of crude oil, copper, natural gas, etc. for just 4,000 to 6,000 rupees. Okay, for gold and silver, it will cost you around 10,000 rupees per lot. And not only this, you will be happily surprised when you get to know the other features that are being offered. I can't give you all the details here as there are many, but I will surely share all the details post you get in touch with me. In today's scenario, if you want to trade one lot of crude oil, you need to have a minimum of 1.6 lakhs as your capital. That is 1,60,000. Similarly, for Nifty, for just one lot, you need to have at least 1 lakh as your capital. Now replace 1.6 lakhs with 4,000 to 6,000 rupees and 1 lakh with 6,000 rupees. It does make a lot of difference to a retail trader like you and me, right? So that's the help I want to extend or offer. And if you are interested, then you can get in touch with me on the details that are being shown on the screen and we can take it forward. All right, so in day trading, what are the major points that a trader tries to find in order to make a buy or sell entry? Well, some of the important points are like retracements, others are reversals maybe, and stuff like that, right? Now, in order to confirm that the stock will reverse from a particular point, we make use of either the technicals like some indicators or oscillators, or we take the help of price action to determine the same. Okay, and when we talk about price action, we majorly see or we try to find a very specific candlestick pattern. Now, having this thing in focus, in today's video, we are going to discuss about a similar kind of candlestick pattern that is very effective in finding a reversal. Okay, and just to add to it, let me mention that this is also one of my favorites. But needless to say, I don't solely depend on this particular candlestick pattern or uh, like or believe on only this thing and take a trade. I always combine this particular candlestick pattern with a technical and the results are magical. OK, so the candlestick pattern that I'm talking about is a pin bar. Now, when we talk about pin bars, we have two kinds of it. One is a bullish pin bar and the second is a bearish pin bar. So first thing first, let's understand what a pin bar is and how do we know that a particular candlestick is a pin bar. OK, so let me take you to a picture here. All right, so this is the pic that I have prepared for you. So these two things that you see here, the left hand side one with a green body is the bullish pin bar and the right hand side with a red body is a bearish pin bar. OK, so how do we actually know that a pin bar, that a particular candlestick is actually a pin bar? Well, the first thing that you need to know here is in a pin bar, the body of the candlestick is relatively small. So what is the body? The green area that you see here, that is called as the body. And the line that you see here, that is called as a shadow or a tail or a wick. OK, so whenever a pin bar is formed on the chart, you need to make sure that the body of the candlestick is relatively very small. 
right? So the same is with the red one, the, with the bearish pin bar. The body of the candlestick is really small. The red area that you see here, that is the body of the candlestick. Okay, so that is point number one. Point number two is whenever a pin bar is formed on the chart, the wick, this tail portion that you see here, that is relatively very long. Now, why is it long? Why the body is short? We will come to it in a while. Okay, but as of now, we are discussing about how do we know that a pin bar has formed on the chart. Okay, so the second point about the pin bar is that the wick that you see here, this wick or this wick has to be relatively longer. Okay, now there are variations to it. And when I talk about variations, what I mean to say here is if we have now here in this picture, the wick is only at the bottom on the lower side of the candlestick, right? We don't have any wick on the upper side, but just in case if we have a wick like this, Oh, let me change the color. Just in case if we have a wick like this, or just in case if we have a wick like this, do we consider this to be a pin bar? Of course, yes. But the only thing that you need to make sure is the wick in a bullish pin bar. Now, this is a bullish pin bar. In a bullish pin bar, the upper side wick or the nose or the tail, whatever you, you want to say, that should not be long enough. So if we get a wick like this, now we cannot consider this to be a pin bar. Okay. But if we get a wick like this, a small one, then we can consider this to be a bullish pin bar. Similarly, on a bearish pin bar, if we have a wick like this, we cannot consider this to be a bearish pin bar. But if we have a wick like this, we can consider this to be a bearish pin bar. Okay, so these are the variations that you will see on the chart. Not every chart can give you a perfect pin bar, right? So a small nose, on the top of the bullish pin bar and a small nose on the bottom of a bearish pin bar is fine. We can still call it to be a pin bar. Okay, now hope that is clear. Okay, let's get off the picture here. So now that we know how a pin bar looks like, it's also important to know why and when are they created? Are they actually created on the charts? Okay, so the major reason uh, why the pin bar gets created on the chart is because of rejections, the price rejections by the buyers or by the sellers. Okay, so if the buyers reject the price, then we get a bullish pin bar. And if the sellers reject the price, we get a bearish pin bar. Okay, so the pin bar as a concept tells us about the momentum shift towards the opposite direction. When I talk about momentum shift, what I exactly mean is if a stock is in an uptrend, if it is going up, 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 and we get a bearish pin bar, then we can expect the stock prices to be falling. And if you have a stock which is going down, 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 and then we get a bullish pin bar, then we can expect the stock prices to be going up from there. So that is what is called as the momentum shift. Okay, now one more thing that needs to be taken care of when we are dealing with the pin bars is that prior the bullish pin bar is created, the movement of the stock should be bearish. So the stock should be coming down and then a bullish pin bar gets created and then the stock starts going up. It should not be the case that the stock is moving up and then we see a bullish pin bar getting created and then we expect the stock prices to be going up further. No, this does not work because pin bars are not continuation patterns. Pin bars are reversal patterns. Okay, so have this in your mind and the same holds true for a bearish pin bar as well. Okay, now what I mean to say here is let me bring in the picture once again, okay? And let me bring in the pencil here. Right. So this is a bullish pin bar. And as I said, we need to expect the stock prices to be, I'm just selecting the color, just a moment here. Yeah. So when we get a bullish pin bar, we need to expect the stock prices to be coming down like this. When the stock prices are coming down like this, and then when we get a bullish pin bar, then 
we can expect the stock prices to be going up from here like this. Clear? Similarly, in the case of a bearish pin bar, we have to make sure that the, that the stock prices are going up like this. When the stock prices are going up and then when we get a bearish pin bar, then we can uh, expect the stock prices to be reversing or going down from there. This is how it works. Okay, and as I said, if the stock is already going up like this, and then we get a bearish a bullish pin bar, then we cannot expect the stock prices to be going up again. No, this is wrong because as I said, pin bars are reversal patterns. They are not continuation patterns. Okay, clear on this. Similarly, in this case of bearish pin bar, if a stock price is falling like this, and then you get a bearish pin bar, you cannot expect the stock prices to be going down further. No, this is not how it works. It's wrong. Again, the reason is pin bars are reversal patterns. They are not continuation patterns. Okay, so I hope you got the point. All right, now let's move on. Now, another perspective to pin bars is the color of the body. I I'm really sorry. Let me bring, <laughs> bring down the picture here again. We would need it. Okay, now, uh, so another perspective, what I was talking about uh, is the color of the body. Okay, so uh, this is important. So as you saw earlier in the pic here, okay, a bullish pin bar, that is this one, okay, is having a green body. So this is a green body that it is having, okay. Yeah, so this is a green body that a bullish pin bar is having and this is a red body that a bearish pin bar is having, okay. So Coming back to the bullish pin bar, so the bullish pin bar is having a small green body and it is having a long wick on the downside. Now, what if the body is red? Let's say this is not a green body, rather it is a red body. Now, will you consider that to be a bullish pin bar? If the body is red, please do not consider it to be a bullish pin bar because it clearly tells you that the sellers are still in strength. Okay, like theoretically, they still consider it to be a bullish pin bar. But in real time scenario, it has been seen that most of the time it does not work. So we need to follow the ones that we see happening in the live market and not in the theoretical concepts. Yeah, similarly for a bearish pin bar, that is this one, okay, it has a red body and a long wick at the upper side. Now, what if this body is green? Now, if the body is green, please don't consider it to be a bearish pin bar because it clearly tells us that the buyers are still in strength. I mean, if you want to trade well, guys, these are the very basic things that should be imprinted in your minds and your eyes should get used to these things so that the moment you see the candlestick within a fraction of second you should be able to decide what you need to do it should not be the case that you see the candlestick and then you try remembering how a bullish or a bearish pin bar looks like and then again you try to remember whether the body should be green or red no 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 this should not be the case okay so make sure that you wrap up well with the basics okay so i hope you're clear so bullish pin bar will be considered only if the body is green and the body is uh, small and we have a big wick on the lower side bearish pin bar will be considered as a bearish pin bar if we have if the body is red and the body is small and we have a long wick on the upper side of the candlestick okay i hope that is clear now let me get back to the presentation okay so now let's get onto the charts and see some examples okay just a moment right Okay, so this is uh, a five minutes chart uh, for m and Finance, okay? And the reason why I have selected five minutes chart is just to show you that the pin bar gets formed in the lower time frames as well. And we can trade using the pin bars in a lower time frame for intraday trading as well, okay? Higher is the time frame, more stronger it becomes, 
So let's say in 15 minutes, you get a pin bar. That is an added confirmation. In a one hour time frame, if you get a pin bar, that is even an added confirmation. In a one day time frame, a one week time frame, or in a one month time frame, which we use for positional trading or swing trading, if we get a pin bar in those kind of uh, uh, time frames, then of course it is more stronger, right? So getting back to the chart here, as you can see, let me bring up the pencil. This uh where did it go i'm sorry let's uh let me discuss about the bearish pin bar first and then we will get on to the bullish pin bar okay so the circles that you see here this one uh just a moment uh this one this one and this one all the three pin bars that you see here all the three candlesticks that you see here are bearish pin bars and as you can see after the pin bar as expected the stock fell this is a bearish pin bar after a bearish pin bar it fell right after a bearish pin bar it fell now the question is is it that easy is it, is it that easy to find a bearish pin bar and will it be correct if we take a position a short position or if we initiate a sell trade blindly just by seeing the pin bar of course the answer is no i mean how can you trust just one candlestick now all the three examples that are shown here are perfect pin bars because we don't have a lower wick right we don't have a nose at the uh, lower end of the candlestick right they're absolutely flat so this is the example of a perfect bearish pin bar now talking about how to take the entry it is mandatory for you just a moment guys just a moment okay i'm sorry about that so we were talking about the entry uh initiating a sell trade when we get a bearish pin bar so what i was saying was when you get a bearish pin bar you need to make sure that there has to be a resistance level above it as simple as that now that resistance level can be known by using any indicator let's say for example pivot okay if you have a pivot sitting just above this pin bar then it gives you multiple confirmation that okay first confirmation is a pin bar has been created a bearish pin bar is created so the stock might come down second confirmation is we have a pivot which is acting as a resistance so it becomes a second confirmation that more likely the stock has the chances to fall so make sure to bring in a technical it can be a pivot it can be a moving average as well okay so let's say for example we have a moving average like this okay or if we have a moving average like this or if we have a moving average like this okay so the point is the stock price should be facing a resistance when it forms a bearish pin bar as simple as that now how do you find whether a stock is facing a resistance at that particular point or not i just gave you the hint use any of the technicals but make sure that there has to be a resistance here as simple as that so your entry will be in this case your entry will be here after the pin bar candle has been formed stop loss will be just above the resistance somewhere here and again your target uh, like can can be set whatever uh, using whatever uh, thing you follow like for example for me if you, i'm into intraday trading and if i'm trading a 200 rupees script then i'll set a target of maybe 2 rupees that is one percent of the script price right so in this case your entry will be here the stop loss will be somewhere here above the resistance and then you can set a target at two percent move similarly here your entry will be here stop loss will be set somewhere here above the resistance and your target will be around a two percent move from your entry so this is how you deal with a bearish pin bar clear now let's move on to the next page wherein we will discuss about the bullish pin bar now the circles that you see here they are the bullish pin bars this one okay i'll explain this okay just concentrate on this one and i have no only taken this example okay now what you see here 
what exactly do you see here? You see a small body, that is point number one, which confirms that it is a bearish pin bar. The body of the color is green and you have got a long wick on the downside. Now, we also have a small nose or a small wick on the upper side as well. You see here, right? So, is this a pin bar? Of course, it is a pin bar, the way I just discussed before some time. So, when you are getting a bullish pin bar, uh, the best case scenario is you should not be having any wick on the top of the candle. But in case you have a small wick on the top of the candle, the way we have it here, then also it can be considered as a bullish pin bar. Right? So, the stock has been coming down. We get a bearish, uh, sorry, a bullish pin bar at this point and we expect the stock prices to be going up further. The same rule applies here as well, guys. Don't blindly take a bull, sorry, don't blindly take a buy position just because you have got a bullish pin bar here. Make sure that you have a support here. Now, the support can be in the form of any technical like pivots or moving average or channel or anything that works for you. But you need to have a support level just below or uh, just touching the bullish pin bar as simple as that so your entry will be here right the stop loss will be just below the support level and your target will be whatever thing you follow to book your profits okay as i said uh, if i'm dealing with a 1200 rupees script then i will expect a 10 to 11 to 12 rupees move after i enter here and then i'll book my profits clear now Talking about this guy, you remember I told you that when we are talking about bullish and bearish pin bars, we have to concentrate on the color of the body. Now, in this case, it is actually it has actually formed a kind of a bullish pin bar. But can we call this as a bullish pin bar? The answer is no. And the reason is because the body of the candlestick is in red. If it would have been a green body, then of course we have, uh, we can say that it is a bullish pin bar. But here in this case, I will not qualify this to be a bullish pin bar. Again, let me repeat this. In theories, okay, in theoretical concept, they consider this to be a bullish pin bar as well. But as I said, in real time, do not consider this to be a bullish pin bar most of the time it will not work okay and as a trader it is very important for us to set some rules for ourselves so this is you can consider this as a rule clear so this is what i wanted to uh, let you know about the pin bars guys okay uh, so and just one more thing i think i have already covered it uh, start um, okay uh, the thing which I also want to mention here is please don't have unrealistic expectations from the pin bars. Okay, as we all know, nothing in the trading world is 100% perfect. So it would be wrong on our part if we expect the pin bars not to fail. They do fail, but the good news is most of the time they work well. And just because a pin bar is formed on the chart does not mean that it will immediately start the move. No. There has to be multiple reasons for a particular stock to be going up or to be moving down. So this is where you need to bring in the other technicals that will give you multiple confirmations depending on which you can initiate your trade. Okay, so I hope you're clear on the complete concept of pin bar. This is what you need to know about pin bars if you are into intraday trading or any kind of trading. Okay, so that's it from my end, guys. And for the guys who have not watched my previous video, I have put in the video card on the top right corner of the video. The I symbol that you see there, you can click on it and watch my previous video. And for and as always, would request you all to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And also, please do not miss the ending of this video as you will get some more information about HYIT. That might be helpful to you in some way or the other. And please feel free to ask your questions or queries, if any, in the comment section, and I will surely reply back to them. And also, please do not forget to like this this video if you liked it so that's all from my end and i'll see you all later hope you all will stick back happy trading and take care of yourselves bye, -bye.